Bay Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. You're welcome to Patriots Lament. Hi, this is Randy. Good morning, Randy. I appreciate uh, Josh you bringing up the anti-discrimination issue, and that was an interesting uh, thought you had about the purple people and uh, <laughs> anti-discrimination laws to protect purple people and the uh, perhaps remote instance where this particular purple person has an idea, brilliant idea for a new be- better widget and uh, is hired by the guy that did not want to get have to hire him because of the anti-discrimination law and makes a lot of money. That's, that's an interesting thought, but uh, the way I look at it is anti-discrimination laws really hurt purple people and they hurt the people that are forced to uh, uh, hire them if they don't want to hire them. Uh, I have to ask myself, down in the Old South, if you had a Ku Klux, a Ku Klux Klan person that owns a factory, would he discriminate against black people in his factory? And, of course, the answer is no. Uh, black workers were very well sought in the most prejudicial times back in the South. They need those people. They decried it when uh, the blacks started leaving and going up north to work in auto factories and things up there, sucking away all their good workers. Uh, because uh, anybody will be hired because they can put money in the pockets of the factory owners. What is determined is is what they're worth. And uh, if a Ku Klux Klan member has a furniture factory and he just doesn't like peop- uh, black people, for instance, uh, he will still hire them because they will put money in his pocket. And if, his, uh, if he doesn't pay what their market value is, his competitor will hire them and get rich. So there is no need for uh, anti-discrimination laws. And the one, and Rand- it, yes, that's exactly what Josh said, Randy. Yeah, and I agree with with what Josh says about it. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Four five eight talk is the number. We'll move on to the next caller. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello. 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 Go. Speak, young one. My name is Ghana Gilbert. Okay, thanks for that for the uh, a little bit of a prank call going on there. That's all right. Uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting to me when you when you find uh, an issue like the the mining or the energy or whatever else. People talk about how we need affordable energy. I, I don't think we do. I think what we need is for people to be able to have self reliance. If if the government comes out and offers you affordable energy, and says, "Well, all you have to do is sign up on the on the dotted line, and we will give you affordable energy," they already do that. It's called uh, the the fuel subsidy that gets sent out to poor people. Anybody that that qualifies in terms of how little they make can get it. Mm-hmm. There is absolutely no incentive to find any different form of energy if somebody is giving you affordable energy. What what we need is self reliance, and that is not being taught in the schools. It's not even being taught in the churches. It's certainly not being asked. Uh, you know, but you're not even being asked for it by your political party. I mean, how many people, when you go down to a political rally or something, they just they tell you how to vote. They tell you who to vote for. They don't ask you to think for yourself or examine the issues. Am I, am I wrong? No, no. It's the problem with political parties. I mean, we've ranted about this forever. It's- what our founding fathers warned us about, but we don't seem to care. But, I mean, those guys from 200 and some years ago, obviously, I've said it over and over, didn't know what they were talking about. We're so much smarter now. I mean, just look at it. We're obviously smarter than they were. I mean, we're so smart now, we, we're going to ban people and tell them what they can and can't burn. That's how smart we are. Yeah. All right, 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? It's Bill. Hey, Bill, what's on your mind? Well, if Golden Valley is a nonprofit organization, why don't we take our tax dollars, give it to Golden Valley, bring down the cost of energy to three cents a kilowatt per se, and let us all go on uh, electric? What's up with that? Why can't that happen? Where uh, where do we get the tax dollars though? What do you mean? We pay tax dollars now. Well, I know. I'm, what I'm saying is if they diverted any of the money that we give them now, they would definitely want more. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, but they give our money away as grants anyway. Oh, no, that's what I'm... Yes, you're absolutely right. They do. So why don't we give it as a grant to Golden Valley and let them drop the the price of electricity down so it's more affordable so that we can use it as a heating uh, and then call it a utility or call it whatever you want. Well, let, let's say if we did that, what's going to, what's, what's, what is going to be Golden Valley Electric's incentive then to do anything to find a cheaper form of energy? If they, if they just get subsidized, aren't they just going to continue to do the same thing they're doing now? Well, then uh, put a regulation on it, just like you would if they regulated us. All right. Well, I personally think that would be the backwards way to do it. The, the problem in the first place is regulation. Regulation drives everything up. Regulations drive everything up. Regulations don't help anything thrive. That's what the word means, to regulate. Okay, but you're going to take away... you. You're putting pressures on the Americans, on the people here in Fairbanks, for a few people, a group. You're talking about the the, the burning stoves? Yeah, I'm too, well, I'm talking about, well, I got to go. Uh, anyway, something to think about. All right, well, thanks yeah. for thinking about it. Think about it a little more. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello? Could be. Could be. Depends who it is. Yeah, it's Chuck. Chuck, go ahead. Yeah, hey, I uh, unfortunately don't have a lot of dealings with these folks that want to control our lives in the day to day. And I've been here a while. It seems like, oh, uh, used to be everybody worked for something, producing something. And what right now? What's the mix with the population? What percent of the population actually works directly or indirectly for the government right now? And it seems like that's kind of what our problem is. That is exactly where our problem is. Are you ready for this number? Yeah. Right here in the Fairbanks North Star Borough. Fifty-nine percent of the people work for the government at one level or another. Is that is that the ones that actually directly work for the government? I'm talking about people who are directly employed by the borough, the city, the state, the feds, or the military. Wow, that that's yeah, and you you know we're we're on the verge of a, a real boom with our our natural resource. A bit want to limit the use of wood stoves are going to encourage the development of our resources to benefit families and people who want to work. You kind of broke up there. I didn't. Well, I'm, I'm saying, do you, do you think these people that want to control our lives and limit uh, our, the use of our uh, our wood, do you, how, how do you think you feel about mining? Uh, they're probably the same people that are producing the ads against Bristol Bay. Yeah, the, well, the uh, oh, what is it? Pebble mine out there. I mean, there's government produces no wealth. The only time that they have anything, the only way they get any money is when they take it from us. So, fifty nine percent of the sector is producing nothing, and it's coming from forty or thirty nine percent, thirty. <laughs> yeah, I was made 60, 41%. It's coming from the 41%, except for the fact that that 41% may not necessarily be actually working either. I'm just talking about the ones who are actually directly employed by government. Of the 41% that remain, you've got a number of people that are unemployed who are then therefore also re, re, um, getting money from the government. You've got people who are employed but also receiving a subsidy from the government, like myself. Yeah, I'm a veteran. And I, I, I have to say that I, I, I believe I earned the benefits that I get from the government because of my service. Uh, and, and I believe that anybody who served earned what they got. I mean, this is part of the whole issue that goes all the way back to the Revolutionary War and Shays' Rebellion. It's the things that uh, are the, the things that we promise our troops need to be delivered. Sure they do. This uh, thing goes all the way back to the Mayflower Compact, what we talked about last week or two weeks ago. Basically, you have 41% of the people producing and 59% taking well, what what percent of those uh 41 percent that don't work for the government actually are just providing services for the government that i, I don't know but yeah that's got to be a large what, sector too and then there's a large sector of people that don't work at all or don't pay any property tax so we probably whittle it down to probably it's an 80 20 and what? it's not sustainable it's just like what eventually will happen i mean luckily 
for us so far, there's been a lot of wealth in the past that the people have, but it's slowly being taken away. And eventually you'll have what happened with the people that came over on the Mayflower. You'll starve because if there's not enough producers producing for the non-producers, eventually there won't be anything left. Well, now, now this whole uh, wood stove uh, and coal thing, that seems to me the reason the people that are using wood and using coal uh, seems like those people would be the producers. Uh, well, the, they're certainly not relying on government to take care of them. Right, exactly. So the, 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 this huge majority who have an income that's guaranteed, um, you know, and, and like are compensated way above somebody who's working with their hands and producing something, they don't want to put more stress and and drive the people who are producing out. I don't that's what they think in their head, but it seems like we're at a tipping point and it's gone the other way. I mean, and this election will certainly bear out what's true, especially with the borough uh, seats. We'll, we'll have to see, but I appreciate your input and you guys uh, speaking out. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for the you. phone call.